Welcome into the College Football Overtime Podcast. My name is Garrett Chapman. His name is Abe Gordon, and we got a lot to get into because we have less than two weeks until we have college football on our television, Abe. It's been a long, dreary offseason. The worst offseason in all of sports is in college football, but worry no more. It's almost there, and we have actual team previews that are going to be coming up today right here on the College Football Overtime Podcast. We're going to get into our little ACC conversation, we're going to give you our favorites. We're going to give you our biggest challengers and maybe a little sleeper or a wild card that could jump up and surprise some people in the ACC. Plus, the AP Top 25 was just released, and we got to talk through that because there's a bad luck charm in this poll, and I'm going to tell you what that is. But before we jump into any of that, Abe Gordon, how you doing, buddy? We're doing good, brother, man. Just Ticking, talking down the days, uh, depending on where you live, where you're listening to this from. High school football is going on this week, man. And uh, as we know, uh, we work our way backwards. NFL starts last, college right in the middle, and then high school first. And so if high school is getting going, it means college is right around the corner, baby. It's right there. We got the Corky Cut Classic right here in the great state of Georgia here in the Atlanta market, which is where we are. Plus, we have big recruiting news and everything else that's been going on across the state. Georgia Tech recruiting. I don't know, for anybody who's not aware, I cover the deal of jackets for 24-7 sports in addition to everything that I do with the station and right here on the College Football Overtime Podcast. But they just picked up Josh Petty, which I'm not going to go too deep into this discussion necessarily, but he is the second highest rated player in the history of the Georgia Tech football program. Best player since Calvin Johnson. Only two players in the entirety of Georgia Tech recruiting have been a five-star player. And Josh Petty is now one of them. Huge huge gains for that program and i'm really excited for those guys over there on the flats and let's see if they can put it all together because it's going to be a really difficult schedule for these guys but let's actually not there we're actually going to go start with the ap top 25 because they did just release their schedule and or not their schedule their list of teams so let's start in from the back to the front and i have a couple of teams that i feel like we're stumped and Abe, I'm going to get your thoughts on that here. But uh, starting here at number 25 is Iowa, a team that could not really score a lot of points last year. They reshaped their offense, brought in some uh, some transfer players, and, and maybe they're able to reset what they were able to do on offense. The defense, of course, is still as strong as ever for Kirk Ferentz and company. But uh, look, if Iowa can't score points, then I don't see them getting much higher than this on that list. Um I think that's going to be a really good football team. It's a team that if you can just put together a competent offense, all of a sudden they become a really good team. Yeah, and we've been waiting, asking for that to be the case for how many years now? I mean, we had that joke of like the running point total that they need to keep their offensive coordinator and all that stuff. I mean, look, Iowa does this thing, though, where they, through the early parts of the year, they'll they'll score a little bit and defend a, a heck of a lot. and. Then it finally hits conference schedule and it kind of runs into them and and they do fall apart. So uh, they'll, they'll probably climb a little bit, right? I mean, you look at some of the teams in front of them, who they've got to play early on. I am, they'll, they'll do their regular bit where they get somewhere around like 14 and 13, something like that. And then they're like, oh, yeah, they still can't score against anyone. So now that they're facing teams with offenses, it's a real problem. So <laughs> that's probably what we're looking at for them. Yeah, it seems like it's going to be pretty consistent. It's not very good if your best chance to score is not when your offense is on the field. It's when you're returning punts or you're playing defense. That's, generally speaking, not a good no. sign. But, look, the defense is really good. Number 24 in this list is a team that I, I have a feeling we're going to be discussing here in just a little bit is NC State. Of course, Grayson McCall is going to be in at quarterback there for, uh, Day, or for Doran's squad. And this is a team that really came on strong in the second half of the 2023 season. A team that's pretty much a, a surefire bet to win eight or nine games. I can't remember the last time. I, I don't know if they've ever won 10 games in the regular season. I can't remember off the top of my head necessarily. But this is a team that I feel like could surprise some people in the country. Yeah, I, I mean, look, there we, we're, we're going to talk about it in a bit with the ACC. But, like, there's a couple of teams up top that you know you have to discuss. And then right after that, it is a big old smorgasbord of who knows what the heck's going to happen. Uh, and NC State is certainly in in, in that group. Um, look, you got Grayson McCall, uh, and that's a big time transfer. This is a kid that at one point looked like he might be going to Florida out of Coastal Carolina. Mm -hmm. He stayed at Coastal. This was a, a year ago. He stays at Coastal, plays a year, and then he does eventually transfer to NC State. A lot of talent. A lot of NFL guys are going to be watching this kid because he can really 
fling it around the yard. So uh, an upgrade there will make it very interesting to see what they can do. Yeah, I'm really interested in it. And again, I'm not going to go piece by piece. I'm going to go line by line through this. So 23, 22, 21, and 20. Number 23, Lincoln Riley in the USC Trojans, a team that uh, really needs to figure out itself on defense. Of course, you get the new defensive coordinator in there from UCLA. We'll see if they can actually do that because Caleb Williams is there no longer. Number 22, Jalen Daniels in the Kansas Jayhawks, a team that, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's still a little strange for me to see a team like Kansas sitting there in the top 25. But here they are, a team that uh, could potentially make some noise in the Big 12 Conference, a new look Big 12 Conference. And then number 21, another Big 12 team, a newcomer to the Big 12 Conference, Arizona. Uh, Noah Fafita under center again for these guys. And, and look, the Wildcats had an incredible end to their 2023 season after Noah Fafita took over. He goes throw for throw with Michael Penix and, and Caleb Williams in those two games and then proceeds to win, what, nine games in a row or something like that? It was an incredible finish for those guys. And then at number 20, Texas A&M. Mike Elko's first season over there in Texas at a college station. So any, any thoughts on those teams that, that just came in right there to round out that group? Arizona is one of these teams that I would keep a much tighter eye on than, oh, they're starting in preseason rank 21 and maybe they make a little bit of noise. I, I think there's real top 10 potential there. They, they got to obviously answer the questions of, a new head coach, but as you yeah. mentioned, the quarterback is still there and he is as good as anyone in the country this year. And so I'm going to keep an eye on that one. I think they could climb pretty quickly. Yeah. Jed fish, of course, is no longer there. He's off of coaching the Washington Huskies, but I think they're going to be a pretty good team. And then Texas A&M is another team that's just immensely talented. It's just a lot of questions. Connor Wegman and company on offense. I just don't know what they're going to look like. They lost a lot of players, but there's still a lot of talent there. Mike Oko is a hell of a coach. Like we saw last year when he was at Duke. Uh, coming in at number 19, it's going to be the Miami Hurricanes, a team that I think could be a really interesting team. They're really talented, just a team that hasn't really been able to put all the pieces together. Um, it seemed like last year after they lost to Georgia Tech when they could have taken a knee, everything just sort of fell apart for them. They were still a really, I mean, between the 20s, they were a really good team. They were putting up good yardage, uh, but now you got a new quarterback under center with Cam Ward. We'll see if he can actually take this, this offense to that next level that they've been hoping and praying they would see down there in Miami. Number 18 is Kansas State, uh, a team that a uh, new quarterback under center. Will Howard's off to Ohio State. We'll see if they can do it. And they're one of the favorites, again, in the Big 12 Conference. And 17, one of the other favorites, Oklahoma State and Ollie Gordon. And then at number 16, a team that used to be in the Big 12, Oklahoma, now in the SEC. Kind of weird seeing them in, in there at, at the SEC. I see Southeastern under their name. That's never going to be something that I'm going to be used to. I don't know. I don't know if I ever get used to that kind of thing. Uh, it'll at least take me like three or four years before I really do. But uh, Oklahoma sitting there at number 16. Yeah, I, I mean, out of that group, it's just Avery Johnson. You mentioned at Kansas State. They're going to come in kind of in that group of can they win the uh, the Big 12? And yeah. uh, it, it is all going to be on, on his shoulders. Because if Avery Johnson can kind of come in and fill what you lost in Will Howard, I don't know how big of a drop-off they're going to take. And I think when you look at schools – that come in and specifically Arizona hoping for maybe a slight drop off from the defending big 12 champs with Texas and Oklahoma out the way. Um, but if Avery Johnson delivers, they, they're, they're going to be tough again. So very interesting to see them predicted so high uh, once again. Yeah. And then coming in here at number 15, another sec team, a team that's been in the sec for a very long time, the Tennessee volunteers. Uh, look, I, I think that they could be one of the most interesting teams in yeah. college football this year. Of course you have, Nico Ayo Maleva under center, first year starter for the team, second year in the program. Josh Heupel, we've seen what this team can do when they actually have a consistent quarterback who can keep them ahead of schedule, and we'll talk about that here coming up in the coming episodes when we get into the SEC preview. But I think they are instantly one of the most interesting teams in the top 15 because I could see them dropping all the way down because things just don't work out necessarily. And Nico, of course, he's his first year starter and like the jitters get to him and something else happens. He's just not ready yet. That could really happen. I could also see them jumping up into the top five and making a serious run for the SEC championship game if he delivers on that hype. So they're one of the most interesting teams in all of college football this season. But number 14, another pretty interesting team, a team that's kind of been the heel of college football here as of late, the Clemson Tigers. Dabo Sweeney, of course, the, the biggest antagonist when it comes to the transfer portal and name, image, and likeness and the new era of what college football is. They are right there at number 14. Number 13, another SEC team, LSU. 
reigning Heisman Trophy winner Jaden Daniels is off to the NFL. Garrett Nussmeyer is under center there. He's got a big arm. We saw what he was capable of doing. I think they're going to be a really interesting team. But again, this is another team that did not play very good defense. Think Lincoln Riley and USC. If they can figure out the defensive side of the ball, they could be a really good team for Brian Kelly here this year. 12 is Utah, the Big 12 team, the newcomer, the favorite in the conference right now. I think that they're going to be a really interesting team. Of course, you have uh, uh, his name is escaping me, the quarterback who's coming. Cam Rising. Cam Rising is back this year for his 15th season in college football. He's going to be leading. Maybe his last season, maybe we'll find another reason to come back. But we will see there. But, um, of course, Utah coming in there at number 12. 11 is Missouri in the Southeastern Conference. Had one of the most surprising seasons of anybody in college football last year in the SEC. They uh, came onto the doorstep, just barely missing out on a chance to play in the SEC championship game. But they lose to Georgia and then uh, beat Ohio State in, I want to say the Peach Bowl, uh, or was that the Sugar Bowl? It was the Sugar Bowl. Uh, last season, big big year for Eli Drinkwitz and company. Yeah, the one that jumps out of me that group is is number fifteen Tennessee. It just feels like there's a lot of hedging your bets by putting them kind of in that middle of the pack because you just don't know if Nico is what we've kind of been promised he would be, which is the savior, uh, the Messiah, Lisan Al Gaib. You know, Lisa of, of the, ten- the Tennessee Volunteers and all that, but. Um, yeah, and I have to, I'd have to look at their schedule to, to just see, you know, maybe they just have an incredibly difficult schedule and people realize it, that by the time he gets it going, you know, they, they're just kind of going to be middle of the pack in the SEC, but that's one that if it goes well for them and you mentioned it, we've seen what Tennessee can look like when it goes well, they're a top five team. They were mm-hmm. a couple years ago until they ran into the actual number one team in the country, the Georgia Bulldogs. But, I, I mean, if he can deliver as promised, that's a team that I think will not be in the 15 for very long. They, they could be in the top 10. But, um, yeah, it just a lot of these are questions at quarterback, and, and it's mm-hmm. just kind of interesting to have to go through it with, with uh, you know, Cade Klubnik. Is, is, is he the real deal? Uh, kind of mixed results last year, right? Garrett Nussmeyer, uh, they got to replace a lot of offensive skill guys. Uh, there's there's questions up and down, and that's why you see these teams kind of in the middle here. They're not bad, but they're not necessarily up there with the elites because there's just too many questions. That's the thing as you count down, we'll, we'll start to have fewer and fewer questions about teams as we get towards the top seven, top five, top three. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they're big question marks for pretty much everybody in college football. That's part of the nature. That's just in the nature of college football. You know, I'm mean, like you have amateurs and like these are they're still 18 to 21 year old kids and they're still figuring it all out. But speaking of quarterback questions, one of the biggest quarterback controversies from last year was after one got hurt for this team, Florida State. Now they got a new one under center. DJ Uyunglele. Of course, he was at Clemson for a few years and then he transfers out to Oregon State. Now he's transferred back into the ACC. And he's leading the Florida State Seminoles. And that is a huge question. I'm going to save a lot of my commentary for them coming up here when we break down the ACC. But they're one of the most interesting teams in all of college football. Well, I keep saying that for everybody. Everyone's the most interesting team in college football. Florida State's transfer you. They're a team that uh, really uh, they really took the, the college football world by storm last season with a bunch of transfer players. They're trying to do it again. We'll see if uh, lightning does, in fact, strike twice. Number nine, Michigan, the reigning national champions. Coming in at number nine, which I, I'll save a lot of my discourse for when we break down the Big Ten, but this is very realistically a team that could lose four game this, games this season. Coming in at number nine, though, I, I think on a preseason poll, this is one of the first bits of controversy, in my opinion. I don't know if I've, I've seen a reigning national champion rated this low. I don't remember the last time I've seen something like this. I'd have to go back and look. I, I actually bet it's probably not as far back as you think. Like I, I'm sure there's there's you know guys that lost Heisman and you know coaches left and stuff like that, like they did here. I, I bet it's not that far back, but but yeah, I, I mean there's there's a ton of questions, right? And um, you you got multiple things he- holding over this program as well. Actually, I just googled it. Google is my friend here, and uh, I should have done that before. But Michigan is the lowest ranked reigning national champion in the preseason AP poll since Auburn in 2011. So it has. Yes. I mean, maybe you think that's a long time ago. I, I, I thought you were going to say something like 1974 was the last time. But 2011 was a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you really think about it, um, it's been a minute. Of course, that one was when Cam Newton, of course, and, and the Auburn Tigers won the national championship and then they departed. 
all of them, all of the good players. Nick Fairley, um, I mean, like everybody. Uh, that was really interesting. But it just popped into my head. So I wanted to get that out there. Number eight is Penn State, a team that uh, look, they, they ran up the score on some uh, some not-so-good teams, but then couldn't get the job done when they faced the big boys. Drew Aller is back under center. Hopefully they can bring out some explosivity because they were lacking that surely, sorely missing it last year uh, under center. But number seven, Notre Dame, the fir first and only independent team in this poll. Uh, the Fighting Irish are in there at number seven. Uh, new quarterback under center, uh, Riley Leonard. Very interesting team this season. Uh, Ole Miss comes in at number six, highest ranked for, ranking for them in a very, very long time. Um, I think that's since the 70s. They, they had a top 10 ranking back in the uh, 2000s, but I want to say that this is the highest. Just going off the top of my head, this could be the highest since that team in uh, the 19, late 1960s, early 1970s. Yeah, I mean the Fighting Irish to me are um they're they're the sleeper team that people just keep looking past and obviously the AP poll didn't look past them but I mean how many times have I mentioned something with the Irish to you over the course of the offseason and you're like oh I forgot about them good call I, I just think with the the transfer uh, of their new quarterback out of the ACC um they they can be dangerous and it, it's kind of time to feel Marcus Freeman out too um this is now his players. It, this is now his program. This is no longer the remains of Brian Kelly. Th this is Marcus Freeman's program for the first time, uh, really, I would say, where the majority of it is, is his stuff. And I'm interested to see if he's the real deal or not, because it's been a little bit tough to tell. But uh, we should we should find out pretty quickly this year. Yeah, I think this is a, a really – they're a compelling offense, especially if you look at – what they're adding on defense too. I mean, like they've, they've added a bunch of really, really talented players in the transfer portal Ole Miss. Uh, I want to see what they do in that situation. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but we'll see. I think we're, we'll save a lot of that dialogue again for when we break down the Southeastern conference, lots of sec teams in here in this top 15, not a very big surprise. And then also in the top five, rounding it out with Alabama, the reigning sec champions, of course, biggest story from the season is, uh, Nick Saban off to the golf course. Well, to a uh, advisory role. Let's put it that way. He's retired. No longer part of the Alabama program, and uh, he's not leading it anymore. So, Kalen DeBoer is in. But, of course, Jalen Miller is still under center for them. I I think this is going to be a talented team, just like they were last year. Uh, some people see a massive fall off. I do not. I think they're going to be right there in the thick of it. A people definitely agrees with me there. Another newcomer in the SEC, Texas. Quinn Ewers and company rounding uh, coming in there at number four. Oregon at number three. Dan Lanning taking his team into the Big Ten. One of the favorites in the conference alongside of number two, Ohio State. Uh, Will Howard under center. But outside of Will Howard, he's the biggest question mark. But outside of him, it's the defense is extremely good. The defensive line returns a ton of talent, including multiple guys who could be day one or, or even day two picks in the NFL draft, but uh, Ohio State's going to be very, very good. Georgia coming in at number one, but the big piece for Georgia here is 18 of the last 20 AP preseason number one ranked teams failed to win a national title, including Georgia last year. It's a jinx that only Alabama and USC in 2017 and 2004 overcame. So interested to see if they can jump and get through that, but no real surprises in the top five. No, I, I don't think so. I, you know, I, I have some concerns about Oregon being up there immediately, but that's just me. Um, yeah, getting into a new conference, losing uh, and having to replace a quarterback and a couple other talent skill positions, uh, maybe a little too high on Oregon for my liking. But other than that, I have too much of a concern with it. Yeah. So going through this, um, four, three quick notes that I want to drop in before we uh, jump into our ACC preview, and I'll let you do the same, Abe. Um, number one is no AAC teams were included in the top 25. They did have some guys getting some teams getting votes, but this is the first time since 2015 that a single American team is mentioned in the top 25. And then another surprise is not a lot of ACC love. So we're going to get into this here in just a moment, but I want to say this really quickly. The, the, you have your A tier, your top tier teams in the ACC. They have a very large middle tier. I want to see who can jump up into that that other upper middle tier that's going to be into like your Miami's, like where your Miami is currently sitting right now, like the back half of the top 25. I think they've got a lot of teams sitting there 
between 26 and like 40. And it's really, really, really tight right here. And I want to see who can jump up and get into that next level. There's got to be one or two of these teams that's going to take that next step, whether it's SMU, whether it's North Carolina, whether it's Georgia Tech, or maybe Miami sticks it out right there. But no Virginia Tech in that group right there. SMU, Virginia Tech, North Carolina, none of them getting a lot of love and securing their spot in the preseason top 25. Mind you, it's a preseason poll. Not really that big of a deal. But the other one that's kind of weird is Colorado got a vote. I don't know why Colorado got a vote. A lot of love for Colorado. I don't know why, but whatever. All right, I'm pretty sure Dion bullied someone in the AP to vote for him. That'd be my <laughs> guess. Probably. Got one vote, so all it takes is one. Abe, what you got? No, I, I mean, again, nothing too surprising for me. I, I just, you know, I, I'm trying to look at the teams I think can move up and the teams that probably can't. And, like, there's a couple teams in here that I look at, and I'm just like, I don't know how much upward mobility they really have you know, until you get to like eight and oh, nine and oh, uh, I mean, how much further could certain teams jump? I mean, Florida State, with the schedule they have, uh, teams ahead of them don't lose. They're, they're not going to jump anyone. And so that's the thing for me is, is can you jump teams from where you are? I think a team like Tennessee, uh, 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 even a team like Clemson, obviously with the opener they have, they can jump. There's upward momentum. Florida State opening with Georgia Tech, I you know, they're going to need help to continually move in there. But, uh, you know, this year more than ever, we're going to be looking at that 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 because of the playoffs. And I, I think yeah. there's so much intrigue about getting into the top 10 and, and seeing what teams, you know, behind you or ahead of you um, win, drop off, and kind of what your allowances is. But it just doesn't seem like a lot of upward mobility for some of these teams. Yeah, I think it's going to be very interesting there. I mean, again, we talked about this when it was the four-team playoff, and like, wow, this is so competitive. There's not a lot separating them. Most of the time, all it takes is time. You, it, it Nine times out of ten, what we've seen in this playoff era is that just let the games happen, and everything else sort of figures itself out. But, Abe, let's jump into our ACC preview because, look, I, I mentioned it just, just before. There's a very large mid-tier here in the ACC, but we're going to go through the, it this way. We're going to give our favorite. We're going to give our biggest challenger. We're going to give a wild card team, and then it's going to be a surprise team. Now, the surprise team can be a team that you think is a lot of people are expecting to win five games, and maybe they win eight or nine, or maybe people are expecting them to win nine or ten, and they actually win seven. It's up to you. You can decide however you want to do it, and if you have your favorite, your biggest challenger, your wild card, and your surprise team, drop it in the comments below. Or hit us up on Twitter at Abe Gordon, at GCHAP ATL. And uh, we'll let you know who has the best one. And we'll, I don't know. We'll retweet you or something. I don't know. We'll figure something out with that. But, um, Abe, let's just start right here. Let's just go straight into the deep end. Give me your favorite in the conference. Yeah, I'm going to be honest, Garrett. I don't know how much yours or eyes are going to differ from favorite challenger. I mean, I think our surprise will be different. Yes. Um, but I, I don't know how much it's going to be different. And look, I'm not trying to get tricky. I'm not trying to, to to pull one over on anyone or get cute. Like, yeah, my favorite's boring old Florida State. I'm sorry. They were the best team in the conference <laughs> last year. Yes. I still think they have enough um, coming back. Obviously, they could fall if DJU is, is kind of a return to Clemson DJU and not um, most of how he looked at Oregon State DJU. But like... Yeah, I, I mean, I just, I'm just i just not trying to get tricky. Uh, they're, they're ranked the highest in the coaches' poll and in the AP poll. Um, I, I think they're prepared for the moment more than anyone else in recent years. They've, they've been in big games, um, and they seem to have Clemson's number recently. So, um, yeah, I, I guess I'll take Florida State as my favorite to win the ACC. Well, I, I can't really say that they're going to – they've had Clemson's number. They've beaten them once in the last, like – seven years so i i can't necessarily say that but they are my favorite i, I think yeah. that they have mike norvell credit to credit to him i mean he's cultivated a really strong roster i mean this is a good group of good group of players the wide receiver position is going to be fast the running back room is going to be filthy and deep um they did lose trey benson but they returned three guys who can legitimately like take on and lead the acc in in touches and and in yards if they were the sole guy and I think they're going to be really good on defense. The defense is going to be nasty again in 2024. But, the, I mean, you said it. 
It's DJU. Can he take that next step and, and build on some consistency and find that next level? He wasn't really able to get it done at Clemson. He was he was okay at Oregon State. I thought he was going to be a lot better than he ended up actually being. But you only have eight starters coming back as a whole. Um, and, and that is a big deal to me. Just because it doesn't mean that they're, they're weak points, just question marks. We just don't know what they're going to be this year so far. But, I mean, look. They're talented. We know that, but we don't know how they play together. And I, to look, they got Georgia Tech week one or week zero in two weeks. And that's not, a, that's no slouch of an opponent week one or week zero. I keep saying week one. Their first game of the season, let's say that. No slouch of an opponent there. So I, I think we'll figure out who Florida State is very quickly. I think we're, we, we know kind of what Georgia Tech's going to be a really formidable team on offense, but uh, they get them week, week zero. So, the biggest challenger for me is a team who, like I mentioned, I mean, it's a team that you said they have their number. They beat them last year. Uh, the biggest question is whether they can do it two years in a row because Clemson probably should have won that game. Clemson mm-hmm. was outmatched in that game uh, talent-wise, I would say. But, uh, I mean, as far as the record and, and the way that the teams were playing, not talent-wise, but Clemson should have won that game. And I think – if they played that game more times than like 10 times, I think Clemson probably wins that game six or seven times. Special team situations. And the defense is going to be filthy again this year. Really, really good. The problem for Clemson this year is the same problem that they've had over the last couple of years. It's that their ceiling is lower than it's ever been. It seems like they're trending down in that sort of category. Uh, how good can they be? I mean, how good can the defense be? Because the offense, Garrett Riley, his first year there, uh, he didn't have the right guys. And they didn't really get to expand the offense. They didn't get to uh, get the ball down the field. They lacked explosivity. And I wonder if they're going to be able to find that next year here in 2024. But, look, they could win 10 games next year, be a strong team, and be a team that nobody wants to face in the playoff. It's kind of a middling bunch. Look, I... I hate to be as simple as it can be, but it really is this simple. Like if either quarterback, and and I agree with you, they were my challenger too, Garrett. If either quarterback like significantly outperforms the other, like that's who's going to win the conference. Like if Cade Klubnik or DJU are anywhere remotely close in this discussion of how they're performing each year, then yeah, I'd probably give a little bit of a lean to Florida state, but, but there's certainly a world in which DJU is not anything special and, Cade Klubnik steps it up, and if he's significantly better than DJU, then yeah, I think Clemson does have the talent to take down um, Florida State. Uh, the other thing for me, the concern for Clemson is I am just rapidly losing faith in Dabo Sweeney. Um, yeah. His approach to the game and what the game is now and has become, um, it, it, he's just not a guy I'm starting a program with right now. And I understand he's one of the very few with all those national championships, but um this this is a big year for him as well. Jump into uh, just jump right into the wild card. What you got? Yeah, I, I, it, it's it's Miami, and and more specifically, it's Cam Ward. Um, because I think Miami is every bit as talented as Clemson and Florida State. Uh, I really do. Um, but but they haven't had the right vessel, the right tool in recent years. Um, uh, obviously their quarterback last year or, or past couple of years, they haven't been able to get it done. They've transferred out all that stuff and they get Cam Ward in. And I, I don't know what to think of this guy. I, I this, this is a guy that uh, I guess flirted with the NFL. And so a lot of scouts seem to like him, but, um, I thought he got off to a great start last year in the PAC 12 and, and really slowed down after the first four games there at Washington state. And mm-hmm. so he, he's going to have to be a little bit more consistent, but they've got talent, man. And they should be able to score. I mean, really score um, if, if he's converting at a high level. So Miami's my wild card. And and like like I said, like I'm not trying to get too tricky. They happen to be the the third highest ranked team in the ACC as well. Yeah. So then you go through the the rest of this group here. So three through nine on my list could all be my wild card or surprise team. Ooh, nine is whoa, deep. I can't, no, you go deep. That's the thing. It, it goes pretty deep. So you, I, I wrote down Miami because I wasn't sure if you were going to have Miami on that list because Mario Cristobal, I mean, he doesn't maximize his offensive talent. It's just been a consistent theme 
for Cristobal over his career. And I'm going to go with this team. It's going to be SMU because mm. okay. Preston Stone comes into the ACC and he immediately becomes one of the top guys in the conference under center. Um, they're really good. They're not your, st- you're, you're, they're not your typical ACC newcomer, like the AAC type of team. Like this is a team that's going to be like Rhett Lashley has got a good program. And if they can sustain the schedule, that's the biggest question for me because you're not, you're not, you're not playing an AAC schedule anymore. That's the biggest thing. You're actually playing some power five opponents every single week. And I, I think that middle level, like I mentioned before, that middle level of the conference, lots of chaos is going to live in there. You know, I mean, like you could have any one of those teams winning eight games and I would not be all that surprised. That's really what I say when it, like, I'm, I'm talking about like a wild card team, because there's another one of those teams that could turn into a Louisville. Like you look at Syracuse, that's a team that, that comes in at like number 10 on my list. They have a really easy schedule and they've got uh, a new quarterback under center, new head coach. You've got new uh, coordinators all over the new coaches all over the field. I think it's going to be an interesting team, but as far as wild cards go, I think SMU just as a newcomer is a, is the epitome of a wild card because you really have no idea what they're going to be. They can come in and win five games, or they can come in and win nine, and they're one way or the other going to be a very interesting team. But then, as far as surprise teams go, it's got to be Georgia Tech because I think Georgia Tech on offense is going to be that team. They're going to be one of the top offenses in not just the ACC but in the country. Uh, Haynes King is back under center. You have a thousand yard rusher in Jamal Haynes. You have uh, potentially two guys who can jump into that thousand yard receiver mark um, in Malik Rutherford and in uh, Eric Singleton. Those are two guys. Well, specifically Eric Singleton. Uh, He was a freshman all American honorable mention after really only playing the second half of the season. I mean, he's a guy who flashed some unbelievable upside in his freshman year last year on the flats that, but, the biggest question for them is whether the defensive line can hold up. Can Kevin Harris be that guy on the on that pass rush? Can he got, can he jump in there and be a difference maker? I think the secondary is going to be solid, but it's the the defense as a whole. They struggled last year because they couldn't stop the run. They couldn't get off the field, and that's why they lost some of those games. Now you have a new a new defensive coordinator, and you have a new defensive line coach, edge coach, safeties coach linebackers coach, everything on the defense was basically picked up and tossed out the window. And I think that they could be a really good team. I think that the thing that separates them from being a great team are questions on the defensive line and an unholy bad schedule. Like, uh, I mean, a, a wicked schedule that would punish even the best teams in the country, the most consistent teams in the country. Uh, but Georgia Tech, I think could, they could be a, a, a significantly better team than they were last year and win only five games. Yeah, I'm not surprised you went with Georgia Tech there. I kind of left it open for you. Um, but you did take my surprise, and that, that actually was going to be SMU. Um, I, I think you brought up a lot of good points about them. Uh, with Preston Stone, um, I think he gives them a little bit of legitimacy at the quarterback position, which you're going to need if you're going to yeah. shock a couple teams throughout the season. This is a team that went, what, 10-2 and two last year with a loss to Oklahoma and then a road loss to TCU. I think that was it, and – I know people are kind of looking at them and, and saying, um, you know, they, they come to us from a lesser conference. What are they going to do here? And I just I, I don't know, man. I think they're dangerous. I think Rhett Lashley, as you mentioned, is, is a very good offensive mind. I think they're going to be able to score in the ACC. I really think they're going to be able to score quite a bit. The question is, all right, you can score. Can you stop anyone? Uh, and I think that's the biggest question for SMU because I think if the answer to that is yes, they can – they could kind of join into maybe like a what a Louisville did last year and and yeah. um, kind of be a little dangerous. So I, I they I've got them as my surprise. I think they're going to be a really good team. But two honorable mentions. I just want to throw them in here because I really want to talk about them for a quick second. It's Virginia Tech and it's NC State. I think NC State could be a sneaky team that could win ten or eleven games this year. I, they could very easily crash the college football playoff um, if things come together. But I need to see them prove it. Dave Doran, is, I mean, he's he's a team, a guy who's consistently gotten them to that eight nine win mark, but they haven't just been able to get over the top. You know, I mean, Grayson McCall is right there, um, the new guy on, on campus, and I, I know we talked about him when we were breaking down the uh, the, the AP top twenty five poll. I, I think he's got to be the guy who throws everything and takes them over the top. 
they've got talent. They're replacing Peyton Wilson on defense. That's going to be very interesting to watch. He was one of the best linebackers in the country last year. But they've just got to prove it. you just got to prove it. And then Virginia Tech, you've got Kyron Drones under center and a winnable schedule. Uh, and I think they could be a really good team. They might be undefeated by the time they, they see Miami later in the season. So I'm, I'm fascinated with, with what Virginia Tech can do. Yeah. Uh, look, you mentioned that group uh, behind, and, and, and I think it does include, you're right, Virginia Tech, UNC, um, Georgia Tech, Louisville. Um, yeah, I, I, there's a lot of those teams that I think can be dangerous, and certainly, if not dangerous, can be fun. Um, they, they, this is a year that is, I, I think, if you can enjoy the ACC beyond Florida State and Clemson, I think it's going to be a really entertaining year. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think there's a lot of teams that could probably beat any team in the conference, but potentially could lose to any team in the conference. And um, week in, week out, I, that that's going to be a fun watch for me. I, I think there's going to be a lot of fun, entertaining, close games that maybe aren't on the national scale, right? Like, but you look, you go back to like a UNC Georgia Tech or or, or Miami, um, the Miami Georgia Tech finish, how, how those two games finished. Um, not overly important in the grand scheme of things if you're not a fan of one of those schools, but incredibly fun to watch. Uh, I think you're going to have a lot of those, a lot of those uh, this year for the ACC. Yeah, it should be a really fun year in the ACC. It's a, it's a season that uh, I, honestly, I think could go anyway. Um, I, I think Florida State's the, the gimme favorite, but we'll see what happens. But uh, that's it for us. Next time we're going to jump into a little bit more Big 12 conversation. We're going to talk a little bit of um, – Oh, excuse me, there my phone started going off. Uh, but we're going to talk a little SEC. We're going to talk a little Big Ten because college football is right around the corner. Uh, but we're really excited. Thank you so much for joining us here on the College Football Overtime Podcast. My name is Garrett Chapman. His name is Abe Gordon. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to follow along because the college football season is here. So we got to talk all about it. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you again next week.